might see that you've got a lot of troubles in your life. Uh, but to me, personal experience, a lot of issues and, and hardships I've had were to work to make, to keep me humble. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I'm back with Emil. Uh, Emil, I keep on saying that, <laughs> man. Similar names. <laughs> yeah, uh, with Yvonne again, because I do that with Abraham. Right. I'm like, I'm back with Emil. Abraham looks at me like I'm Abraham, man. Um, but I'm back with Yvonne. Um, hopefully you're doing well, Yvonne. Yeah. Uh, in this topic, we're talking about humility. Mm-hmm. And humility is obviously a very important topic as Christians, because... You know, like you go across some verses where like James 4 says, God resists the proud, Mm -hmm. but gives grace to the humble. You're like, okay, the only way I can approach God is through humility. So it seems like it's a very important topic, not a topic that we talk about often, Mm -hmm. but a topic that we actually need to discuss, which is why we're putting a whole podcast for this. Mm -hmm. So where would you like to start that? Yeah, there's one really interesting point that I want to highlight about this. And it's if if we imagine it in the way where you've got people who are away from God, you know, non-Christians. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we look at the people who have come to know God, the people who have, who have become Christians. Now, we like to lay all the sins and wrongdoings on those uh, godless people who are far away from God. But in this case where we're talking about, you know, lack of humility, I think that actually affects when people come to God. That is, it, it, they're more uh, susceptible to these t- sorts of things. And, and there's a lot of examples uh, that I want to talk about. But uh, why not so much? I mean, there are pr- proud people who uh, are living, you know, away from God. But one point is, you know, when I was away from God, uh, living in sin, uh, living in death, I didn't have much to show for my life. And so in a way, I wasn't proud. Uh, I, I didn't have much to show. So, uh, you know, when you come to Christ and you get the blessings of Christ, you get the knowledge of God, you get uh, talents in the spirit, um, uh, the blessings, you know, the you know, God gives blessings like uh, earthly blessings, financial blessings, um, all sorts of of different things. That is when you know righteousness. You know, now you have righteousness. Now you're a bit above, you know, the the stand the standard flesh. That is when humility can sort of come apart, and that's why I'm saying it can come in and affect. Um, you know, people who have come to God more. And we see that in uh, the the Bible Old Testament narratives. We see King David, he started very humble, his very humble beginnings, you know, looking after the, the sheep. And and you see he, he maintained that humbleness as he was progressing through to become king. And uh, there was actually a commentary that I was reading about um King David, and it was saying that later on he not so much became proud, but became uh, less humble. Uh, his humility sort of diminished, yeah. and uh, that's when we see him. You know, when he uh, you know commits adultery, and you know he he murders someone. You know, someone who's who's humble, uh, living in just that humility and submission. You know, they don't go to that level. Um, yeah. So he sort of lost a bit of that humility there. So so I guess that his humility was diminished because of his power and his title. Exactly. Right? So sometimes mm-hmm. power can get into your head yeah. and or a title. And that's sometimes in ministry because we've exactly. done a lot of time in, time in ministry that sometimes that title or that position where you are, it can creep creep in pride into your life yeah. and humility starts to diminish. Mm-hmm. I think that's what always you got to remind yourself. As Jesus says, you're unprofitable servants. You're just doing what you're told. Yeah. And the idea is that as Christians, if we're not applying humility in every area of our life, mm-hmm. then that's not really humility. Yeah. Because you're mean, just picking and choosing 
where you want to be humble and where you just want to bring out the desire of the flesh in your life. Yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned about in ministry, uh, I think there's been studies that have been done. And uh, one of the biggest things that uh, leaders, uh, pastors study, uh, struggle with is, is the issue of, of power. Mm. So, um, you know, not only you're, you're, you're elevated when, when you're a Christian, when you're serving God and when you're, um, you know, in a, in a ministry, uh, you, you're given insights, you're given spiritual blessings and you're also, everyone sees you as, oh, the man of God. Mm. And, and that sort of elevation, uh, can make someone very susceptible to, to diminishing humility and even being proud about it. It's just yeah. something we need to... It creeps in as well. When I was in Taiwan, we, we did um, mission work there, me and the family. Um, it is very common to elevate someone with a title. Mm-hmm. you know. And that was something that when I was there with the people around us when we were serving we just said guys that needs to change you know they're like oh this guy is you know he's he's a pastor or is this and they would have this unhealthy way of seeing people in leadership in mm-hmm. church said okay that needs to change because these people are god's servants you know and their job there is to serve you mm-hmm. and if they want to be the greatest in the kingdom as jesus said you got to be lost. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to elevate them into a celebrity, then you've got something wrong there. One is that person is accepting that kind of praise. And two is a congregation. They allowing that to happen, right? They, they are pushing for that. With Jesus, when he fed the, the few thousand people, they came to him. They're like, we want to make you our king. Mm-hmm. Jesus walked away. Right, with Jesus is like, oh, you know, what are we gonna, what are we gonna have to follow you, pick up your cross, mm-hmm. come with me? You're like, wait, that's a very humiliating thing to do, mm-hmm. pick up, picking up a cross and following you. Do you know what that means, Jesus? Yeah, I know. Pick it up and come follow me. So even in following Jesus, Jesus was cutting that pride from day one. Mm-hmm. You want to start following me? Pick up a cross, which is a sign of humiliation. Mm-hmm. It's a sign of suffering. Yeah. And come after me. That That's what we can do, right? But a lot of people come into Christianity thinking, okay, now I've got a status. I'm a religious person. And that's actually starting to happen very recently now, right? Christianity is becoming... Um, how can I say it, it, it's becoming the thing, the cool thing to do today, right? right? Oh, you've got like Jordan Peterson become a Christian, or you've got this certain YouTuber become a Christian. So yeah, it's the cool thing to do. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, Christianity has never been popular and it's never been the cool thing to do mm-hmm. because when you become a Christian and get to the root of it, when you get to know God, mm-hmm. you start to realize that God wants to strip you from everything. And he wants you to start all over again. Yeah. And sorry, sorry to I just want to add w- one last point. We were talking about what we gained in the last episode, yeah. right? And we spoke about having the mind of Christ in that. In Philippians 2, he's saying, let this mind be in you, the one that was in Christ, that he did not find a robbery to be equal with God, but he humbled himself to take a form of a servant. So part of being, part of having the mind of Christ is humility because Jesus didn't only teach it, he demonstrated. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, we're having this podcast, but it's all about demonstration. Exactly. It's an act. Yeah. Just um, want to touch on, you were saying that that elevation of when you were in Taiwan, um, the pastors. Mm -hmm. uh, So maybe that's a cultural thing. Maybe we have that in a way here, but... At a lesser level, I think a lot of people still have that. I remember I always felt <clears throat> not so close to or connected to someone perhaps who was a pastor. Mm. Uh, I felt that you know uh, maybe it maybe oh, maybe because they were older as well, but 
uh, I think a lot of pastors have that just that step above and you need to be careful when you're around them you need to act differently mm -hmm. sort of thing uh, you need to have this reverence to oh you know he's he's a pastor or he's a you know minister or a priest or something like that and and having the mind of Christ um, also removes that part of it as well. There, there shouldn't be any level of, uh, you know, it says Jesus hang, uh, was around tax collectors and sinners. Um, and, and I've also seen some pastors who were just, the, how easygoing they were, just um, really was amazing to me. Yeah. Like they were just, you know, they were just very calm and collective and cool and, uh, there wasn't this elevation of righteousness and reverence. Uh, and I think that's a lot of, that's something that a lot of, um, if you're in ministry, if you're a pastor, just remember that people might be awkward around you. We need to sort of break that sort of thing and yeah. just say, look, we're, we're, we're all people, you know. We're Being all... approachable kind of thing. Approachable, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, yeah. Like with Jesus, he, he called to one of the kids to come to him. Mm. He says, "If if you want to be in the kingdom of God, you will, you want to be one of them." Mm -hmm. He chose a group that was most likely the most ignored group in the presence of Jesus, because in the presence of Jesus, you've got your Pharisees, you've got your Sadducees, you've yeah. got the Herodians, you've you've got your disciples, you've got people who are waiting to be healed. And Jesus puts everyone aside. He's saying, could you bring that child here? And if you want to be in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. that's what I want you to be. Yeah. So it's like the most important person in the universe is hanging out with, socially speaking, culturally speaking, the least important person yeah. in, 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 in that place, right? Because often ch children get ignored, right? Mm -hmm. You're a kid, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Just hang out with your friends. Go play with your friends. Go, go, go away. Go play with your yeah. friends. Yeah. And let the adults do the important things. Mm -hmm. And you said, no, that's the most important thing. Yeah. And if you want to learn from everybody, you're not going to learn it from the religious people. You're not going to learn it from the nobles. You're not going to learn it from your government. You're going to learn it from a child. That's a very humbling perspective, yeah. right? It's, it's just that Jesus is putting everyone aside and bringing a child to be the example. Yep. And I think as Christians that sometimes speaking in ministry, you get a church pastor that surrounds himself with the elders mm -hmm. or the important key members in his church, right? And you have other church pastors. They're like, five minutes later, you see him hanging out with the kids, they're playing soccer and stuff like that. Yeah, You're like, oh, okay, he's, he's doing something else. Like he's occupying himself with you know, what he thinks at the time is the most important people, right? And those were like, for example, kids. Mm. So I've, I've, I've seen that and I'm like, that is very successful. As a church, if you have something like that, that's very successful for you. And I've seen sometimes you go to a church, you might even go there for a month. You're, you might not even meet the pastor, mm. right? Because he's so busy talking to other important people. You're like, okay, this... Something is missed there. Mm -hmm. Something is really missed there. Yeah. And I think as, as Christians that when you recognize how important everybody is, and the Bible even calls us to put others above us, you're like, okay, now I see what humility is. Yeah. And I know where I am. My status, yes, mm -hmm. that, that's humility for me. You might have status, you might have talents, you might have gifts. <laughs> Um, but if they're not shared, if they're not shared to people who don't have that, then what's the point of having yeah. them? Uh, I think that you, the most successful thing you can do is to take whatever you have, the, even if it's something small, and to share it with someone who doesn't have that, you know, the children, the um, people who just have a lot of status, perhaps who don't have certain things that you have, you know, knowledge and uh, maybe education or, uh, and status, um, but to just share it with them and and they gain those things from you and they're elevated because of you, because you've lifted them up, 
you've done you've done your job as a Christian yeah. in ministry, yeah. It, and there was a temptation where, you know, the people that came, they started work at 6 a.m. You had 9 a.m., you had 12 a.m. And you had <coughs> yeah. the people at the end that came just for an hour. Yeah. And, and you've got that temptation of um, going back to the master and saying, why is that person that hardly did anything getting paid what I'm getting paid? Mm. You're like, no, that requires humility. That's right. It's it's what the master has given you. That that's what you deserve. Yeah. That's that's your pay. So sometimes even in the other parable, mm. we're like, I've got five talents. Mm. I know how busy I am. Yes. I know how big my ministry is. And there's some random guy doing some work in a local church. Yeah. Yeah, good on you. But the back of my head, I'm like I'm... the person that's really doing the important things that's making the real difference is me. That's interesting you mentioned that because uh, the actual, when you look at the definition of the word jealousy, jealousy, uh, there's two ways. And uh, there's one is envy yeah. and the other is jealousy. And they're slightly different. The way they're different is jealousy is when someone has something or gains something yeah. that you believe that they don't deserve it. That is actually the, the, the source and the, the meaning of jealousy. Oh, that's good. And so just like the, the um, parables that Jesus was saying, those people, they it was jealousy. It was we were out here, they're getting the same money that we're getting. They didn't deserve it. Yeah. Um, maybe a, a blessing in a ministry. Maybe you've got you know a church with a thousand people and uh, one, one guy who's got a few followers does some great works. And you say, well, he doesn't deserve that. Mm. I'm the one, you know, with the thousand people, and I'm the one working really yeah. hard. I do all the work. Maybe he just done something really small. And um, that's also, you know, the blessings in ministry. Sometimes you don't do all the work. You're not working really hard. You're not studying really hard. But just you just meet the right person, say the right word, and, you know, a lot of people get saved. And, and people are like, well, he didn't do much. To, to, to get all that blessings, to, to bring all those people to Christ. Um, but, but that's just how God works because humility is, yeah, he, he uh, I think God works so that we always remember to be humble. Um, just another verse is when Paul is talking about his thorn, he's talking about, you know, his persecutions and, and a lot of hardships that he's facing. But he mentions that it's it's so that he doesn't become conceited because of where you know what that, he's seen, the visions yeah, he's seen, the amount of revelation, the that amount he of revelation he's had, yeah. and just so that God keeps him humble, and uh, that also works, you know, as a Christian. I think, you know, you might see that you've got a lot of troubles in your life, uh, but to me, personal experience, a lot of issues and and hardships i've had were to work to make to keep me humble yeah uh, it, it it's it's a good point that you brought because i was literally thinking before you even brought that point is that um the path to humility mm -hmm. can be a very rough one yeah absolutely. um to christ it was dying on the cross mm -hmm. that was his path of humility to paul was you know, that messenger of Satan, yeah. right? He had to deal with that. And he was crying out to God. And God said, in your weakness, my power is made perfect. Yeah. So in our humility, we get to see God demonstrating his power yeah. and to its fullest. And we see the blessings from it. So I think it's, it's a good thing to keep in mind that if I want to start living a life of humility before the Lord, it's not just easy just to make a decision because pride is latching onto us. Mm. And sometimes God will take us through a path to strip that pride away. But that path can be sometimes a very, how can I say, a very painful, right? In order to teach us that lesson. Because mm. I, I believe when it comes to humility and pride, it's one of those things that we learn in extreme conditions sometimes. 
right? Yeah. It's not one of those things that, um, the we just told about it. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, it's, it's not like just a knowledge, right? Yeah. Uh, the other is this Bible verse. Now I know it. Now I know what God is talking about. No, no, this is a spiritual condition in a human being. And I believe that by the strength of the Holy Spirit, you've got the fruit of the Spirit. When you start applying love, peace, gentleness, kindness, all these things into your life, and you start adopting it more into every decision that you make, mm -hmm. you start to see the that theme of humility starting to be part of you. Yeah. Right? And and you start to see that pride is being stripped away. And God is like, okay, you're starting to be more like my son, right? More like my son Jesus. Yeah. So I think that's that's gonna be very important as Christian. And if a Christian decides to put that off or delay it, God's still gonna bring it around. Yeah. Because God, as as I said in the beginning, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Yeah. So if, if you're in a relationship with God, he's not gonna keep on resisting you. He's like, no, no, no. I'm gonna strip that pride away. Mm -hmm. And when he realizes and receives his humility, then I'm gonna receive him back. Yeah. Right? It's it's that parent child thing. I'm yeah. gonna teach you something, son. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Um we're going to come close to our closing statements. Is there something that you want to share? Yeah. So just to remember that uh, you, you talked about how hard it is um, going through hardships. Uh, I can tell you from experience, uh, being humbled is hard, is rough, but the benefits are, are worth it, are way worth it. To the point, you got to remember what is the sin, the main sin that caused satan to fall and that was pride mm. it was his pride so humility is it, it, you might think it's hard it's hard because it's really really important being mm. humble yeah. is really important to god you know and and uh even though it seems hard but the after the result um where <laughs> you can see that satan was kicked out of heaven because of that, because of that yeah. it's important. It's important. No, that's actually good. And and to be honest with you, when it comes to pride and humility, that's something that's so evident in a person's life mm -hmm. that even outside the church, people will value you on that, right? That's right. Yeah. Like even a non-believer who exactly. might not know God's law and nature, mm -hmm. if they see someone so prideful, they don't want to be ha hanging and, around you. And sadly, um, it deters non-believers if if someone who is christian mm. um but is pr proud and doesn't have that humility yeah. it actually deters people away from christianity that's true that's true so. they that's why you hear sometimes a lot of people say oh you know those church people they always bible bash you and they yeah. just want to tell you how wrong you are and how how good they are um sometimes that's their perspective but sometimes it's actually true right what they saying is very true. And to me, it's like, as a Christian, I just remind myself, I'm like, I used to be like that. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't think you're any better. Now, all you have is Christ. He's given you eternal life. Yeah. You weren't born perfect, and that's why you're a Christian now. No, no, no. You were born a sinner just like everybody else. And the reason why you're a Christian is because you made the decision. Yeah. And all the work was done by Christ. Mm -hmm. All you did is like, I'm going to receive that. Yeah. That's a really it, good point to remember the perspective. Um, you might see a non-believer as maybe angry and, and something that I don't like what you're saying, but just because uh, I know because I've sort of um, been through um, something like this recently, you just got to remember that you were like that and, and think about it from their perspective. You know, Christ wants everyone to be saved. Um, and so, yeah, just the humility and just remember, don't just... Um, despise someone just because they don't accept your message always have a constant love and a humility remember i used to be like that yeah um and i think yeah yeah it, I, I think my, my my last words would be is that part of sanctification it reminds you to stay humble yeah um it would have been very tough if we become a christian 
and all our bad habits, everything goes away. You're like, mm, I'm better than everybody else, right? But then, you know, having come across hurdles or mistakes or still dealing with some bad habits in your life, that's like a constant reminder of God saying, hey, without me, without yeah. my grace, Absolutely. you're just going to be who you used to be. Absolutely. N just let these remind you to come to God always humbly and say, God, forgive me. I want to repent of these sins. I want to change my life. Yeah. And I want to have a new perspective. And that also includes us in the church, right? Because sometimes um, someone might have a problem with anger. I don't have a problem with anger. I'm like, oh, if only he was like as good as me. Yeah. But then the Holy Spirit would straight away remind you like, you might not have a problem with anger, but you might have a problem with patience. Mm. That guy does. Yeah. So you've got what he doesn't have, but he has something what you don't have. Yeah. So each one have their own weaknesses, right? Stay humble. Remind yourself that we all have flaws and we need Jesus. That's, that's so important for us. So hopefully you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.